Okay, uh, today is the second to the last. So FOA, uh, FOA was used to be a very, uh, how to say, the famous uh, one of the uh, kind of a, they have a poten potential to be a star architect, I think 10 years or 15 years ago, but uh, now uh, not as, uh, I'll see, not as well as published as you know, I expected. The one reason is uh, they, uh, they were separate, they are couple. Uh, this office is operated by you know, the wife and husband, I mean, they, are, they were separate. Uh, the scale, the size of the office is getting, got much smaller. And the first project by them was very famous, the Yokohama Terminal. And the first project was the best project of them. So many people were disappointed uh, the project from the project after the Yokohama. But uh, I mean, their book is very interesting. I mean, their work is not as interesting as the, their contemporary architects, but uh, their kind of article by Alejandro and Fasid Musabi, the both a uh, very good writer and speaker uh, article was the, I think it's the very good article uh, which can be kind of a manifesto in recent days in architecture. So have you, have you seen this book? You, you guys know FOA, right? Foreign, foreign Office Architect. Uh, this book uh, doesn't have many uh, writings actually, just only a few pages, uh, the many, but uh, the many images about their project. Uh, but an article of them is, I think it's very good. Uh, also, uh, this book was very, was very sensational in America in early 20th centuries. So, so once when someone said, uh, towards an architecture, towards an architecture was kind of a holy uh, Bible in the 20th centuries to architects, and this one is the kind of Bible uh, for architects in 21st, 21st centuries. So this book was, uh, uh, yes, very sensational. So I made the title, so making architects own identity and their own design strategy under diverse conditions. Uh, the mean is, it Mean is, meaning of this uh, is, you know, I think the condition, environment of this time to architects is very different from 50 years ago, even 30 years ago, uh, 100 years ago, definitely. <coughs> the reason is, uh, because of the globalization and the internet and also market, uh, I mean, I think 30 years ago, 20 years ago, not 20 years ago, 30 to 40 years ago, the market was the kind of a, a local oriented, uh, but now it's, it's impossible uh, to deal with only one market or only one country for their business. The most, especially, I mean, for example, most of the companies in Korea, uh, we do the, you know, we deal with the global market, right? But now when I was a child, I think the most of companies, they are kind of, a, they only uh, think about the, the regional market in Korea. So situation is, uh, it became totally different. So today's contents is the, the background, and yeah, it's not background, uh, the FOA, uh, they used to have uh, two principles. The first, Farsid Musabi is the wife. 
and she was born in Iran, and but uh, I think she moved to uh, the United Kingdom and graduate from you know, Bartlett and go to Harvard GSD for the master's degree. And she's currently she's a principal. She she's. Uh, uh, doing uh, their, sh her own practice, uh, which is a perceived Musabi architects. Alejandro Zaira Polo uh, was, in, was born in Spain and also studied in Spain, but also he moved to the uh, United States for master's degree. And now he had a new partner uh, whose name is, the, I forgot whose name, uh, made some. The last name is Major, Ma Major, Major, last name, uh, Riguano Major or something, yeah. And also, the new partner is also his new wife. So, he, he did the FOA with uh, Farsid Musabi, who was uh, his wife, and Alejandro is doing new office with a uh, new wife. So he's in kind of a... She need a, he need a wife, I think, for his own office. Uh, I think the question of identity to architects in, in this time, in this era, uh, because it's the result from the globalization, you know, as I talked before. Uh, and also they're saying the architecture practice, and maybe mouse is better. Architecture practice is probably one of the most crucial considerations that a contemporary architect needs to make. Ah, sorry. Global identity of architecture practice in you know in circumstance in under the circumstance of globalization is the the most the crucial things we have to consider. <coughs> That's the meaning. So they said, we belong to what we could call the second generation of architects. So we are kind of a second generation. I think that we are, not, not I am, but uh, they are in the second generation. So you are probably fourth <laughs> or third. Uh, I think I'm between the second and fourth, I mean third generation of architects. Operating in the globalization, globalized domain of practice. So, I mean, I think uh, not long time ago, architects have their own stylistic consistency. Stylistic consistency means their uh, characteristic of design. For example, Ando, you know, Japanese architects is a good example. Ando has his own style, right? Albert Caesar has his own uh, style. And Frank Gehry has o his own style. Rukrovize definitely has his own style, yeah. The most of architects in, uh, most of recent architects, in modernism architects, modern architects has their own style. But uh, they said, uh, but a uh, faster pace of market evolution increases in the rate of consumption and the level of information and competition between locations has started to render uh, stylistic consistency ineffective. So this kind of thing, the market evolution and the increase of the consumption, rate of consumption, and new information and competition between locations, it makes the stylistic consistency ineffective. So we don't have a, it's impossible in this uh, environment because of globalization and the global competition and internet, media. So because of those, the style, so it's, it's probably not, it's not uh, possible to keep <coughs> the architect's own style for their, own, their design. So others have simply declared the end of style and the crime, the location and matter are the critical factors in the synthesis of identity. So location and matter, matter, is a matter means is kind of problem, you know, problem, you know, region, uh, location and problems and matters, that's the most uh, critical factor, factors. But 
It's like, you know, for example, Ando, he did uh, some international project, but the you know, style is all the same, right? So he, actually, he didn't care about the context. He, did, he, didn't have, he didn't care about the locations and matters, problems. He just do, you know, what he want. But now it's impossible, so architects has to uh, propose the project uh, which uh, resulted from the consideration of location and matters. So I think the you know, conservative architects, they would have their own style. But uh, contemporary architects, I think we don't have their, our own style. So probably, you know, every, you know, each, each project have a different stylistic uh, things. But uh, it could have a deep meaning than the con conven conventional uh, the projects. So they said the, <coughs> the ideas we propose in this document are aimed at the development of alternative forms of consistency in the practice of architecture. The development of alternative forms of consistency. So they don't have a consistency. Uh, so they are proposing kind of a, you know, kind of alternative forms of a style or consistency, stylistic consistency. So that's uh, their own you know, ma manifesto. So this is the example, the Archdaily. So it's very easy to uh, see, you know, what. Uh, other architects are doing right now. So it's very easy to imitate uh, the style, right? And also Pinterest, you know, I just uh, searched the facade, so many examples. So it's kind of a, uh, it's very difficult to select what is the good for our you know, own project. It's very uh, difficult to judge what is the good. So I think that we are living in the new, new environment. It's the, I think that when I, when I was a college student, uh, it's very difficult to have a good reference. So we have to go to the library and then we have to spend you know, half of days to find the uh, appropriate examples for our project. Uh, th after spending, you know, one day or half of day, <coughs> we can only get the one or two images. But now it's just five minutes, you know, we can get so many uh, things. But you know, how can you choose? How can you decide what is good? What is the eligible for your own project? I think it makes uh, situation more complicated, actually. So, you know, whenever I started, whenever I start a new project, I, I also do the same thing as you guys. I search the examples, reference, but it's kind of impossible to, uh, so what kind of things I have to choose. So these days I'm, I'm not trying to search this because it, sometimes it, uh, I'm, I'm spending just time to search the reference without thinking. It's just actually that is more time consuming than uh, going to the library, I think. So <coughs> I want to show you the first Musabi's lecture. I think it's, it's good. Sure, so talking about, she's talking about similar things. on to be the, um, that, uh, that presentation, please, in here. Presentation, please welcome Professor Fashid Musari. Thank you. Thank you very much to all of you for being here. Um, I will talk about how we should define style before talking about the function of style. But first, let me say that by function, I mean agency, not utility. So the function of ornament can also be read as the agency of ornament. And the function of form can also be read as the agency of form. Style relates to the way we arrange buildings. 
But when discussing the function of style, we are asking what is the agency of style as objects in everyday life. The agency of human subjects in everyday experience has been discussed in the field of phenomenology in, in terms of how humans gain access to the being of objects. This being is assumed as either already existing, such as matter, or being governed by natural laws, or, or as having a metaphysical reality, such as God and so forth. Although more recent investigations in everyday experience, for example, by speculative realism, question the privileging of the human being over other entities and propose the flattening of human subjects and objects, they still investigate uh, objects as given, whether natural or artificial. In architectural relations, it is central to the discussion of agency of buildings in everyday experience. Traditionally, style has been the word employed to describe a narrative <laughs> unite buildings. However, three pivotal changes in the way buildings are designed and used since the 1990s force us to define style differently. Firstly, unity seems not to apply to contemporary architecture, which is characterized by immense diversity. If this diversity is not the product of mere eclecticism or the market, style must account for the coherence that underlies it. Buildings today face many challenges that are separate, distinct, and irreconcilable. They have led to different coefficients for buildings, such as space planning, security, rights of light, fire engineering, sustainability, facade engineering, or health and safety, that are often beyond the expertise of the architect, requiring specialist consultants. The design process has therefore changed from a solo activity to more of a team sport, in which the different coefficients are the product of separate and concurrent so lines of talking, development you know, that unfold uh, at different design, speeds during the design like process this, and introduce much to unpredictability to it. Different building elements, no matter how small or large, are consequently vital forces for the project, some crossing paths with one another and others not. Therefore, style needs to account not for how buildings can be unified, but how they can be coherent and yet be composed of different elements that are imbricated with each other to simultaneously address different concerns. Secondly, with the advent of the internet, the way architectural ideas are made is different, since ideas are now shared and circulated worldwide with astonishing speed, and architects are so steeped in each other's ideas and theoretical anxieties that certainty of what belongs to one person and what to another disintegrates. And thirdly, Again, because of the internet, the way the buildings are used has changed since, uh, since many everyday activities and events that used to happen in buildings, such as shopping, reading a book, or watching a match are now easily accessed online. But since these online activities are all reduced to the uniform context of a screen, independent of time and space, their experience has become very similar, whether reading different books, or buying an item of clothing, or watching a sports match to complement the uniformity and the ubiquity of engaging with everyday activities online, buildings must exploit their unique spatial temporal, temporal natures to generate the possibility for diverse types of encounters between people and activities which buildings house. So for example, libraries so in the wake of e-books e have like changed this. from inward-looking so book repositories solely for quietly taking out and consuming and books to open and differentiated spaces that encourage people to construct different reading and learning habits, while schools, responding to the fact that information can be accessed and searched online, have shifted from generic tutor-focused fo tutor class tutor classrooms that uh, favor the transmission and reception of standard knowledge to unique differentiated configurations that promote different kinds of experience-based learning, while department, department stores responding to the rise of e-tailing have shifted from hermetic environments whose sole objective is the provision of goods to acting as places in which the physical experience of shopping is site-specific, so that buying an item in one store is unlike buying it in any other. While offices, rather than declining in the face of email and conference calling, have shifted from the, from the one-size-fits-all arrangement of tailoring stays to create efficiency to include different types of interstitial spaces that promote knowledge construction through chance encounters and serendipitous knowledge exchange. Therefore, the agency of buildings or their ability to act resides in how their actual presence informs people's experience of their understanding of the narrative underlying it is to deviate it from the traditional uses of style to unite buildings to represent 
the personality of its architect or author, its geographical location, or the time it belongs to. For various reasons, these uses of style are now redundant. For a start, should style strive for unity? No, unity across a group of buildings implies that the actual presence of a building plays no unique part in people's everyday life encounter, but rather provides them with the same experience as all other buildings. Should style represent authorship? No, today architectural ideas exist as an open source. The overzealous protection of an architect's ideas as a signature or autonomous domain inhibits the migration and circulation of ideas and the consequent development of new ones, rethinking what is now labeled as copying or imitation, as sharing from a common pool, as is often done in the field of music or has been explored by the function books, will allow us to detach style from being fixed to an author and treated like an open source or a rhythm which has no beginning or end. It is always growing from the middle, evolving in different directions, corporations, and the increased mobility of technologies, materials, and designers. Strict boundaries between nations have been eroded, like the style of the modern bicycle that has evolved in the hands of different nations ever since its inception. We need to approach the style of buildings through the idea of singularity, that any style can be adopted by any nation and changed to generate new, unpredictable styles. Should style represent a period of time? No, because time is not divided into periods in which everything is fixed or frozen. Today, as I mentioned earlier, buildings are subject to different external and often conflictual causes, which means that they evolve through separate, equal, and concurrent lines of development that unfold at different speeds during the design process, which may take anywhere between environments in the space. So what she was talking about is, you know, style is so, I mean, today the style is not, it's kind of meaningless and having your own style, it doesn't really matter. Even if you have a, your own style and then upload your project on the website and everyone will imitate that. So everything is the open source. So as an architect, what you have to do is the, uh, kind of re the reinterpretation of open source is very important, but uh, we have to also consider, we have to try to apply uh, the technology, new technology, and, and also the, the, re uh, uh, the context of the each regions and kind of a local, localistic uh, problems and the many, uh, many limitations uh, we also need many consideration. So everything is, is becoming more complicated. So having just one style, having and just one, only one discipline is, uh, is meaningless in this circumstance. That's the point of her. So that's why she made the example of guns, actually. So basically, the function is the same, right? But it's not about the aesthetics, right? But the reason of change is because they got the new technology to make the guns better, the rifles better. So that's why it's the kind of a evolving, evolved. Okay. So she, I think she talked about the similar thing. So they, so I'm gonna show you the, their, I uh, introduced their books. So we'd want to see uh, the outcome of the, these first 10 years, uh, neither, neither as a series of contingent exper experiment, uh, nor dependence of style, but rather a consistent uh, reserve of architecture. So, you know, they said they, they don't have a style, um, they don't have a contingent, um, how to say, it's not a contingent experiment. Uh, but, uh, they are kind of introducing kind of a new way of categorize their own work, uh, characterize their own work. So this is the contents. So they didn't use the index of contents, but uh, rather they used the user's manual. So, so this is the... Uh, I'm gonna talk about this later. 
So this is the, uh, the last phase of that, their books, the kind of categorization of their works. So this one is their work, and they also use a tree. So basically, you know, it starts from the one, one thing. It has an origin, and then uh, it looks like an evolution tree. So basically, uh, it has a, I mean, anyway, they have so many ideas, and also every result of uh, all the project was it looks different, but it has a very strong relationship. So that's the point what they were talking about. For example, you know, surface. The surface is very uh, generous thing, right? The surface is, you know, everything is surface. Everything is consist, consisted of surface. The human being is, I am also consist of, uh, made of uh, surfaces, right? Uh, surfaces can be divided by uh, ground and envelope. So ground is just uh, one surface. Envelope is, it, it makes the volume, right? Because it, it enclosed, uh, uh, it, it is enclosed and also it makes the space inside. And the ground is the, mm, it, uh, it can go to the two things, the single face and multiple faces. Multiple faces, it can make the floors, multiple stories. So this building can be uh, in these sections. And I can read this one. And also envelope is the differentiated by two. Yeah, and so on. So this is the, 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 uh, their way of uh, uh, categorize, categorize uh, their work. Okay, so here, so basically most important, the basic thing is the surfaces. The surfaces is divided by ground uh, and envelope. Uh, ground is divided by single face and multiple face. The envelope is uh, divided by single face and multiple face too. But this pole is the different, but basically it has the uh, it has same idea of the surface. So each one, each face is uh, you know, differentiated by, uh, in terms of the, uh, the, the site, uh, condition of the site and, and also matters and ideas. So, I mean, the each project, this is the project. So each project, each project has uh, different ideas. So it looks totally different. It, it looks, it doesn't have any relationship with each other. But basically, it has a. It is anyway. It has contingent. It has a idea, a contingent, contingent idea. Uh, by architect. So that's the way of uh, uh, their style, not style. Uh, it's the way of their display. So it's the. It's very different from the old architects, right? Ando. Ando is concrete and box and not box, but geometry. Very, you know, very geometric uh, approach for design. But this guy's is a project of this guy is so differentiate. Uh, but anyway, they can categorize that, not by single idea, but more multiple ideas. So they said, they insisted this is, this is the kind of a result, this is kind of a design strategy uh, for the, you know, globalizations. I think BIZ also has a similar uh, strategy, and Herzog and Demiron has a similar strategy. Even OMA has a similar strategy these days. So if you look at the, the work of uh, the contemporary architects, it's very difficult to uh, difficult to say who designed this building. So style, we have so many styles. So Keeping only one style is kind of impossible these days. Do you agree? No. Yeah, so they said the solid product can never be entirely constructed by the market. It needs to contain high degree of internal consistency. So it's a very general thing. Um, Architects has to have this kind of thing. Uh, yeah, just just look at the the board character. Uh, <coughs> the various experience and various characters is very important for uh, this era of 
of architecture. Not only one character uh, or you know just single experience, but we have to have uh, the many experience, as many as possible experience as many as possible, and also uh, arch projects by architect. It can have uh, many different characters too. So, so this diagram is this diagram is the thing, this thing, the consistent morphological diagrams, rather than aesthetic, ethical, political preference. Okay. So, landform architecture. Do you? I'm not sure. I mean, last Friday I only have a, three students, right? Two. So you didn't. You didn't. You missed the Patrick Shimara. So, who is that guy? <coughs> Charles Jenks. <coughs> uh, Charles Jenks. Uh, talk about the uh, new generation of architect in architecture in 1997, so 20 years ago. Uh, so next year, who is the next, what is the next new paradigm? What is the next uh, generation? So they said the non-linear mass, uh, including computer design and layout, that's, that makes the new paradigm in architecture. So non-linear architecture, non-linear methodology, uh, it's important. So he made uh, these examples. And, and also Peter Eisenman uh, talked about the folding in 1992. So he, uh, he caught the lads, <coughs> the, constructive art, the constructivist uh, philosopher, so for this space articulates a new relationship between vertical and horizontal figure and ground inside. The, so for this space is the kind of a kind of alternative way to uh, get over uh, the Kardashian grid and so mo uh, modernism, modernism uh, the paradigm of architecture. So folding is the very important these days. So he said this, his, his work, it shows the idea of folding. So some way the folding, it became the style uh, in 19, uh, late 20th centuries. Look. So <coughs> Charles James <coughs> also defined this tendency as a landform architecture. So this is, uh, I mean, Enric Mireles who, who died young. Not young, really young, but uh, young as an architect. Uh, he's a great architect. I think it's, you know this guy. Do you know the Enric Mireles? You may, may saw this. He's pr probably, I mean, uh, he's a good example of rand random form architecture. So random form architecture is the, this kind of thing. I mean, the Zaha is also uh, influenced by the Rentform architecture too. And, and also it has the idea of folding. So it has, I mean, this kind of architecture has the, uh, uh, it has the paradigm of, uh, you know, the idea of a folding, idea of a Rentform, idea of a non-linear architecture. So this is a symmetry. And that one, the Botanical Garden in Barcelona. I didn't go there. So it is also an example of land form architecture too. And so many uh, projects, many proposals also has a land form architecture, non-linear architecture, and this is my one. <coughs> the same. And uh, uh, nonlinear architecture and continuous surface. This is the 
uh, library by OMA in 1990. It's a very famous project. I think you have to know this one. And also another project of Enric Mirales in 2004, before he uh, passed away, this is also kind of a folded, it has a folding structure, folded loop, nonlinear architecture. <coughs> you know, this tendency is, the, uh, is, is still uh, going on. So this is a recent work uh, by Dillo and Scopidio and Renfro, uh, the Colombian University Medical Center. Do you, everyone knows this project, right? <coughs> I think you may saw this project in Archdaily. You know, I mean, the thing of this, the interesting of the of architecture in this time is uh, you know, 10 years ago, I think 15 years ago, rendering, if I see the good rendering, of a certain project, actually the result was worse than rendering. But these days, the result is uh, the better than rendering. I think that actually uh, this building is the recently done, but actually this one, this building is, you know, reality of this building is better than, much better than the rendering. I think the construction is, the technology of construction is, is amazing these days. So I only have a uh, construction photo. Yeah, it's a project of uh, FOA. <coughs> so they did a competition in 2003, uh, La Gavia Park, I think it's in Spain. Uh, so it's the uh, in categorization is ground and single face and rippled and non-oriented. So it's a non-oriented, rippled, single face, uh, the landscape strategy. So I think it's uh, one of the example of a uh, landform architecture. So this is, this is the competition entry, so they don't have a, so I think it looks similar as uh, the botanical garden in Barcelona. Yeah. It's the index of uh, the landscape, uh, landscapes and plants and the programs and uh, examples of examples of how to how it can be uh, used. Kind of man manipulation of the surface to make the lagoons and uh, retaining pools. <sighs> And it also has the idea of a folding too, idea of a run. But the winning project is the, the Toyiro won the project. Uh, very simple and also kind of form, uh, not form, but shape uh, generating the strategy. Uh, I think he, he, he has, a, he, I think he created this shape uh, in terms of kind of a, uh, the biosystem, to make the biosystem of uh, this park. But you know, the, from the sky, it looks good, but uh, you know, from the ground, actually people cannot recognize this. I think that's the problem with Toyiro. I mean, Toyiro is really good in the building, but really bad in the big projects. And I think especially most of Japanese architects, they are really bad in the bigger building because I think the condition of uh, Japan, the situation of Japan, they rarely have opportunity of the bigger project. Uh, so I was curious what it was going on. But I think this construction is not, they made some shapes, right? I think it looks, uh, construction is, I think it's not uh, going on. I think it's uh, cancelled or it's holding, I guess. But even if it is built, I don't think it's going to be beautiful as the, this model for us. The Yokohama is the super famous, so I'm not going to talk about this um, much. I didn't go there either.
this idea of folding is two. And this one is also very famous project by <coughs> um, FOA. It's a park in Barcelona. Uh, and I want to talk about the brief history of urban history of Barcelona. So uh, Barcelona, they actually the cost, uh, the cost of Barcelona, it, doesn't have any special thing. I didn't go there in the early 19th, uh, for probably just a beach, I guess, or beach or abandoned beach or abandoned coast. And also this part, uh, it, it has a, it, it used to be an industrial, industrial area. And then after 80, I think it is abandoned. Uh, so it became kind of the area of slums. So 19th, I think, uh, the government of Barcelona, Bar government of Catalonia, they, uh, they made a plan to regenerate uh, this area. So they actually extend the road to the coast and then make the kind of public spaces here. So this is 1996, it's abandoned industrial area. And, and then they extended this road to the coast so I think his current situation is building by Jean Nouvel. Uh, I went there, I think 2000, 2004, 2005, I think. Uh, I think more than 10 years ago uh, to, to see that this building is but a the area of this building is a neighbor neighboring area of this building is not very friendly, so I just took some photos and then uh, get back. I don't know the current situation. I think it's the Korean people like Barcelona, so probably you, some of you guys went there. Um, I think that I have a very interesting. Uh, I'm I'm always curious. Many you know, Korean architects like Spain. Many Korean architects like Spanish architects, architecture too. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, so I asked that question to one of Korean architects. He said kind of a, uh, he said, how to say, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to translate uh, what he was talking about. His uh, style of uh, Spain, Spanish architecture, I think it has a similarity of a kind of a traditional, uh, uh, traditional ethnic, ethnic or moral, morality, ethnic, as ethnic city, ethnicity, is it correct word? Uh, so let me try to simplify. Anyway, kind of a, the mental aspect of architecture, men, mental aspect of architecture uh, of S Spanish architecture is very similar with the Korean architecture, but I don't totally understand. You know, the Spain, the culture of Spain is, is super different from culture of Korea. And, uh, and also the architectural situation in Spain is totally different from Korean because the, and also many Korean architects, they uh, admire kind of a simplicity of uh, Spanish architecture, but it's, uh, simplicity, simplicity is always possible in their climate because they don't worry about the insulation. They don't need to worry about the rain, actually. They're mostly arid, dry. Uh, but in this situation, it's impossible. We have to consider the insulation and you know, rain a lot. And also, many architects in Korea uh, like the Japanese architecture too, but uh, it's al almost like impossible to apply that Japanese uh, idea of Japanese architecture to Korea because the insulation and, and also any kind of other details. Uh, the climate of Japan and Korea is totally different. 
So I'm always curious. So I think, uh, you know, the many architect, many Korean architects I know, they, they like the Spanish, you know, or either Spanish or Japanese architecture. But both of this architecture is, is the, I think, uh, in my opinion, it's impossible to use that thing in Korea. Anyway, I don't know why I'm talking about this. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so, yeah, it's current situation. This is uh, Herzog and Dimiros building. This is FOAs. I went there 2008. I think it was it's under construction. Uh, you know, I, whenever I went to abroad, I don't actually care about the architecture. I don't try to go to see the famous buildings. I just try to beer, so. Uh, so I, I had beers here. I mean, good thing of Spain is Barcelona is you can actually drink outside. Is it illegal? I don't know, I mean, I just not. Yeah. Illegal in America, I think. Illegal in many countries in Europe, I think. No? Is it legal? It's okay. <laughs> so I drunk. I drunk and, and then I saw this, I think I saw this structure and I, I thought, this is very, uh, looks very expensive. <laughs> and then I didn't care about all these kind of things. <laughs> yeah, and then I realized I went there, but uh, you know, I don't remember any, any, any buildings here. <coughs> okay. So yeah, it's also uh, has the idea of a folding, idea of a nonlinear uh, architecture, landform architecture, <sighs> and I scanned this book, so quality of image is not good. Forgive this. So the next project uh, is also competition. Uh, it also has uh, the idea of folding too. The folding. I mean, suddenly it became the style. So many, uh, the government buildings in Korea, many office buildings in Korea, they just use the, this, the folding looking things in the facade, but basically it doesn't have any relationship with the inside. Uh, UN Studio won the competition, I think. But I don't think it's gonna be built anyway. I think it's better than this, much better than this. It's more, uh, more, I think it's the thoughtful in terms of space, space inside. And other projects, it's also manipulation of loop to make the run, uh, the folding things. And also they, they made this gap to allow sunlight infiltrate inside. <coughs> uh, but I, it looks very ugly. Mm. And this is also competition, I think, in Iran, Tehran in Iran. So I think, do you remember the building I showed in the, at the beginning, the, not the beginning, uh, the Dilo and Scofidios building, Columbia University? I think they used, uh, they have the same similar idea. Yeah. And next one is, uh, it looks very simple, but uh, if you look at the panels in here, and here I think it's the, they, see it's, they said it's all differentiate, but uh, it looks same. I don't know why they did uh, this kind of apples. Uh, also, the landscape, uh, not the plaza design too. <coughs> Interior and exterior. And after uh, divorce of couples, the facade Musabi, she succeeded some project uh, from FOA. So he, uh, four years ago, she, uh, complete this one, uh, the Museum of Contemporary Architecture in Cleveland. 
uh, uh, Museum of Contemporary Arts in uh, Cleveland. <coughs> it looks like OMA's project. I mean, it doesn't look like uh, FOA. And Alejandro, he did a project, uh, he li recently finished the project 2015. I think it's very similar with uh, uh, their previous work. It's kind of making, manipulating the surface to make the nonlinear architecture. And also, uh, they recently designed the, the campus building in China. And also, it's, I think this idea of, uh, idea is the similar to making, you know, the rooftop by uh, manipulate the land from things. So the result is Alejandro, he actually, he keeps, you know, he succeed the idea of a, uh, design a methodology of FOA, but uh, the facade Musabi, she's going to, I think it's a different way.